You are the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of that land. As we live on our lives, fire and water, we do not have to fear. No matter what kind of problem the world gives, we do not have to be afraid. Because God, Christ is our leader. And may God become uh, that leader and may you have uh, victory inside your field. Uh, last past week, we had the American uh, college retreat. And God, uh, the pastor has talked to us about the three things that we must really enjoy. The power that uh, no one can take care of or the, could win over has been already given to us. There are a lot of problems inside our field. But all that problems will become our platform and stepping stone and we can win over the field. God is the infinite God. That infinite God has implanted the infinite power inside of us. The worldly people, about 90% of the people in the world, say that they have to uh, uh, have uh, this potential power. That is why they do this in transcendental meditation movement. But the Bible does not speak to us about that. It is saying that we are the image of God who have this power, the infinite power. If you see in Genesis 1.27, God has created us in His image, and that is everything. All the problems that is inside this world has come because we have lost hold of the image of God. But God said, that He has created us in His own image. God has implanted His image inside of us. Uh, inside this world, the, the people see that they have to uh, uh, improve themselves inside of them. But that's not for us. But inside of us, the life of God dwells inside of us. The inside of the three organization, they say that there are another world. But the people who are the people of God, God has given us the, the food for our soul, which is the Word. We must enjoy the blessing of image of God, and we must enjoy the life of God. And to the people who have this infinite power, uh, God has given uh, the food for our soul, which is the Word, and we must enjoy that Word, and that is inside of us. And this is the blessing that the Bible talks about the most. But the people, we are living inside of this world, and they do not believe this. That is because they are uh, too much uh, their thoughts are too into the physical things but it's different for us what is it is the 
the blessing of the throne and the transcending time and space and the light to save the 237 nations. This is the three transcendences that God has given us. And this is the infinite power. And what kind of works arise after that? This unprecedented, unprecedented and never repeated answers will be given to us even now. And in the conference, the retreat, God, ha uh, the pastor has talked to us about three things. There is uh, Genesis 1.27 through Hebrews 4.12. He said, uh, enjoy the three transcendences. This God has implanted inside of us. And when that is imprinted inside of us, there are three backgrounds that are shown to us. And that is the blessing of the throne, is the power to transcend time and space, and it will be shown through the light of 237 nations. And to the people who have this, still now and always, God will give us the answer of unprecedented and never repeated answers. And no one can overcome these three things. And no matter what kind of problems we face, it's uh, they, the problems cannot overcome this. And that is when we are able to see the correct time schedule of God. And that is why in today's uh, passage is talking about the correct and exact time schedule of God. And first is those people who have lost hold of the mission of Canaan. We haven't read today, but if you see in verse 12, the tribe of Reuben, Ru the Reubenites and the Gad Gadites come out. <coughs> And these are the tribes that went, uh, have exterminated the, the Gentiles who have tried to overcome Israelite. And these people are the Reubenites and the Gadites. But the, if you see in the Bible, the verse that is connected with this is numbers <laughs> you can see that the Reubenites and the Gadites after they have overcome those uh, Gentiles you can see that they are hesitant and as I later on really read the book of numbers and that is why if you see um, uh, numbers 32.6, it says, uh, 32.5, it says, do not make us cross the Jordan. They must go into the land of Canaan, but you can see in the Bible, it says, do not make us cross the Jordan. There are the Israelites that must enter the land of Canaan. But you can see the Reubenites and the Gadites who have lost hold of these missions, they say they will not go into the land of Canaan. Uh, 
But Moses, who uh, them, uh, who has uh, taken the people who have already received the answer, said, let's go into the land of Canaan. That's why if you see in the verse 18 today, It says, but all your able-bodied men armed for battle must cross over ahead of your brothers, brother Israelites. But the Reubenites and the Gadites, they knew that they would take care possession of the land. After they knowing that, they have lost all of their mission. That is why Moses says, Then why are you trying to commit the same sin of committing uh, unbelief that uh, your ancestors did 40 years ago? And you can see that uh, Moses sends the 10 spies. And after the spy, 10 spies came back and heard their report, all Israelites oh, wept but only the two people Joshua and Caleb gave this correct confession that's why if you see in Numbers 32 you can see that uh, only Joshua and Caleb entered into the land of Canaan and the rest have all died People who are over the age of 20, no one will enter. And the same unbelief uh, that the people uh, that was in the 40 years ago have given the Reubenites and the Gadites gave the same unbelief. Why are they trying to do, uh, commit the same sin of giving unbelief after even seeing the works in the wilderness? But you can see that uh, after hearing the word of Moses, the second generation people were different from their ancestors. And you can see that it's in Numbers 32, 27. You can see that they broke down the frame of their own thoughts. The work of God is perfect. The salvation that God is completing is perfect. The, God, the gospel that God has given us is perfect. Because our uh, nature is not that, not perfect. That is why we cannot follow after the work of God. And after everything passes, we regret. Why are people, after experiencing the wilderness, they went back to the unbelief? That is because their nature and the frame of their thoughts did not change. The reason for being hindered after receiving salvation is here. Even after receiving salvation, we are always hindered and we fall down. That is because we didn't, cannot break down our nature and the frame of our thoughts. And that is why after everything passes, they regret looking at the past. But you can see that the second generation, they um, broke down their frame of their thoughts and they went entered into the land of Canaan in the forefront. And that is when Moses, or uh, God tells them, Moses to give this word and that is in Numbers 32, 20 to 23 
and especially in the verse 21 or 23 and said and if all of you will go arm over Jordan before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out before him You can see that God stands in the forefront and will fight for him or for the people who hold on to this problem. Oh, God will fight in, in the forefront for the people who fight the spiritual battle. And that is the same when we do the work of God. You must know that if when you're holding to the Word of God and you're fighting this battle, this spiritual battle, then God will fight in the forefront and will fight inside the field for you. And that is why if you see Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. And, but before this, we must see something that is in the front. If you see Matthew 6, 25, what does it say? It says, look at the flowers in the field and look at the uh, birds in the sky. And that is why you must not uh, worry about what you will eat and what you will wear because God will take care of everything. And that is when God said, you must seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and everything will be given unto us. And to people who are holding on to the spiritual things and fight in the forefront, that is when God will fight for these people. Are you going out to fight the, for the 237 nations? This is not our wish, it's the uh, wish of God. And when we fight for uh, for this, and that is when God will take care of everything. And to those people, who, the Reubenites and the Gadites, who had hold on to the spiritual fact and they spirit, fight the spiritual battle, that is when God took care of everything. And I bless you in the name of Christ that you really experienced this. really experience the, and the fact that God will take care of everything when you hold on to this covenant and go out into the field and fight this spiritual battle. And this is the identity of the people who have been saved. God has called us so that He will take care of everything for us. And may this time, uh, may you have this time in the field where you really experience this. And that is when you are able to know the mystery of knowing the time schedule of God. God has a exact uh, time schedule for us. And that is why if you see in Isaiah's, Uh, the small will make thousands, and the weak will, and the smallest a mighty nation. And I am the Lord, and saying that God has all the time schedules inside His hand. And to really hold on to this, there is something that we must first hold up. In today's passage, you can see that the Reubenites and the Gadites, they held on to this covenant and fought the spiritual battle and they stood in the forefront. What does this mean? 
It is telling us that it is important for us to receive grace through the word. To receive grace from the word, then we must know God, the word of God correctly. And that is when we are able to receive the uh, word that God has given us correctly. What does this mean? Oh, what does the Genesis mean? What kind of uh, incident comes out? And there are the four, after Abraham, there's four tribes. And there are many incidents and many uh, circumstances arise. But uh, the reason that God has given us Genesis is not because of that. It is for us to understand the Genesis 3.15. That is why God has given us the book of Genesis. What does the book of Exodus talk about? It is talking about the mystery of the uh, sacrificial uh, sacrifice. There is uh, even still now Satan is at work and there is no other way to break free from that. But the blood of lamb will give us this freedom. And that is why to restore the worship God has given us the book of Levit Leviticus, Numbers and book of Deuteronomy. And that is why through this is talking about uh, the sacrificial uh, worship. And that is why to restore this gospel, God has given us Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. It is uh, giving, us, giving us the reason that why we must live on to restore the uh, gospel, uh, restore the gospel. And that is talked about in the book of Judges, or Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. It is talking about the standard is, is always in the gospel. And that is why we must restore the gospel. And it tells us to wait for the Messiah, and it is talked to us about in. <coughs> But the true Messiah is not this. But uh, the, it's the book of his, uh, history and the book of the priest, uh, uh, prophet, is what talks about the true Messiah. That is why the four books of the gospel it speaks us about the true Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. And it's also talking about uh, there will be great destruction that will arise in the end of the earth. But the people who hold on to Christ will be a king. And we must understand these words. People say they understand the Bible, but they lose hold of this really important part. We must really hold on to the things that God sees important. And why did God has given us this word? And it says, if you see in Romans 15, 4, it is written to teach us that through the endurance and the encouragement of the scripture. And it says, if you see in 1 Corinthians 10, 11, these things happen to them an example and written down as a warning for us. And then 2 Peter 2, 6, is, has condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, burning to them and, and made an example. And still now, this word is still at work. That is why we must receive grace through the word. And 
Because the word is given to us as the food for our soul, that is why we must hold on to the word. The more we receive grace through the word, our soul, our spirit is revived. The more we receive grace, our immunity will rise. That's why all of our standards must be centered around the gospel and the word. That is why if you see the uh, exact time schedule of God, that is when you are able to see the exact uh, word of God. If you really realize the gospel and really hold on to the word of God, that is when we are able to have absolute victory. What is the uh, uh, fight, uh, the battle that we fight inside the field? It's a battle that God fights for us. That is why in today's passage, 22, that do not be afraid of them. Is that the Lord your God Himself will fight for you. We must always know, and if we really experience that the God is fighting for us, then we are able to be bold. Um, Peter, uh, people, uh, Peter ran away from Christ or uh, Jesus. And he betrayed Jesus. But later on, Peter realizes that this battle was a fight that God fights for him. But you can see that uh, Peter stood inside of the court of uh, court of law. Uh, the religion, and it says in Acts 4.12, he boldly proclaims, Salvation is found in no one else, for this is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. But the people who are in the forefront of the court for religion, they were all shocked. How is he able to have, be bold? Because Peter knew that God fights this battle for him. Uh, how about David? David stood in front of Goliath. David didn't even uh, did not have a strategy. He just ran forward because he was bold. Well, why was he so bold? Because he knew that God fights for him. That's so why if you see in um, 1 Samuel 17.45, it says, it says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Christ. I am going towards you to with the name whom you have defied. And it says in 46, and today, God has placed your head inside my hand. And I will strike your neck. And I will make and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Where did this boldness come out from? Because he knew that God fights for him in the forefront. That is why he could be bold. That is why to anyone who holds on to this word and go out into the field, they will have victory. Do not fear the uh, 
attacks of the world because God will fight for you. And that is why you can see in the Bible where God, the people, uh, people who are being chosen by God, God leads them. And you are able to see the clear time schedule of God. Today, uh, you can see that God says to Moses that you cannot enter the land of Canaan. But you can see in verse 25, it said, Let me go over and see the good lands behind the Jordan. He wanted to enter into Jordan. But Moses knew that he cannot enter the Jordan or, or the land of Canaan. God has given him the word that he cannot enter the land of Cana, Canaan in, when he was in uh, Cardiff, Barnea. But he said, let me go over and see the good and land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. Right now, Moses is 120 years old. It's not saying that he wants to enter and live a good life. But he just wanted to enter into the land and just die there because God has promised that land. Because Moses knew that that was a good land and a fine hill country that God has promised. But if you see in verse 26, it says, That is enough. The Lord said, Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. You can see that the Lord was angry with the nature of Moses wasn't a nature to conquer the land of Canaan. His nature was Egypt and his, he had the natures of the wilderness. And after that, you can see why did they um, leave out the death of Moses? It's talking to us about the time schedule right now is important. And you can see Joshua was raised. Because uh, if Joshua becomes greater than Moses, then he will become like God to the Israelites. That is why he didn't let that happen. And you, here you can see that the, how God raises Joshua. so that the work of God will continue. And that is why through Moses, God raises Joshua. And Joshua was a person that had an internship inside the wilderness for 40 years. He was taught the faith uh, inside the wilderness from Moses. And that is why you can see easily Joshua overcomes the land of Canaan. And that is why the same for us. We must leave behind the important things to our remnants before we die. We must really leave behind our walk of faith to our next generation so that they can be raised like Joshua. What is the conclusion for our, uh, our missions? It's leaving behind the remnants that will be used by world evangelization. And for all our remnants, you must really learn from the lay leaders. And 
And you must be really be taught the faith that these people have. May, and you will experience everything becoming your platform. And I'll come to a conclusion. It says, you will go um, to the position I have given you. The Reubenites and the Gadites, they have lost hold of the position that they have received. But after conquering the land of Canaan, uh, God will call them back. There was a time for Moses, time schedule for Moses, and there was a time schedule to raise Joshua. And through all these things, what must we leave behind? We must leave behind the blessing of the church. We must leave behind our prosperities. And we must leave behind this our prosperity so that they can ha have this evangelism system inside them. And that is when God will give us the a blessing of the three transcendences. I bless you in the name of Christ. Through this word, uh, your all of of your things are restored. God, we, we give you thanks. Let this week be the time where we really find this blessing. Actually, uh, God has given, you have given the Reubenites and the Gadites this great blessings. And the uh, Moses received great blessings, but his time schedule was up to uh, uh, before Jordan. And you have given this to Joshua. And through this, uh, the, let me find the position that you have given me today. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.